And we will start with otbsports.com. As you can see, there is our lineup for OTB AM this morning. A quote from Kenny Cunningham as well, criticising players' attitudes. Bring a sandwich with you, is his advice. It's the danger age, says John Giles, reflecting on friends passing and remembering Tony Dunn. A delicate situation then, more from Kenny Cunningham. That's how he described his relationship with Roy Keane when Keane came back while Kenny was still captain. And it pushed a new sort of fame onto those games. Paul Rouse on how television changed sport in Ireland. That is otbsports.com. Uh, looking at the back pages of the newspapers then, the Irish Independent, this following up from a story that was in a couple of the papers yesterday, Croke Park set to host Ulster and Connacht football finals. Uh, both provinces exploring the possibility of moving their big championship games to Crow Park later in the season. The Connacht Council Secretary, John Prenty, confirmed that they're already actively looking at Crow Park for the semi-finals and finals, again, because Crow Park is the most likely to be able to hold some sort of a crowd, potentially up to 20,000 20, with one metre social distancing provisions and the Ulster GA president Oliver Galligan acknowledged Crow Park also an option for them uh, Clonus could accommodate the biggest crowd with uncovered seating uh, but it looks as though Crow Park is probably going to see a lot of games between now and the end of the season elsewhere we need to be playing in front of crowds Warren's Munster chief uh, Shane touched on this. This is Ian Flanagan, the Munster chief executive, that they are going to lose the vast, vast majority of their income unless they can get back playing behind, uh, playing in front of crowds. And an interesting story on the right-hand side, Mick Wallace, Wexford, and the jersey with the Che Guevara logo, another new entry for the hashtag greatest league in the world. <laughs> the FAI plan to consult with League of Ireland club Wexford after they unveiled a new shirt. The problem isn't the Che Guevara. A picture on the front of the jersey. It's the fact that the new jersey is sponsored by Mick Wallace's political grouping in the European Parliament and that that may well be in breach of FAI rules on jersey sponsorship. The Irish Examiner this morning leads with the latest in a long line of Irish sports people coming out to talk about racism. Antrim Ace urges GEA to lend voice to anti-racism which is the headline here on a piece Larry Ryan has done with Lara Dehunzi, the Antrim footballer. We've also got Galway, Kerry and Wexford planning September club finals. This is a natural reaction. Several county boards preparing to finish up their championships in late September to give more time to their county teams. Galway, Kerry and Wexford are among a number of counties, writes John Fogarty this morning, looking at concluding competitions two weeks ahead of the club window elapsing on October 11th and three ahead of the inter-county resumption date of October 17th. So you're giving yourself at least three weeks to get ready for inter-county, which is probably the sweet spot. In fairness, we've got Shane Kingston coming up a little bit later on, and mm. he says you probably need six or seven weeks. That is assuming that the inter-county strength and conditioning person isn't coming in and actually helping you out and ensuring that you get up to the pitch of the game. If you were just being looked after your club, he says you need six or seven weeks, which is interesting. But uh, these counties look like they're going to be the first out in terms of trying to get more time for their counties. Uh, and then there's another line here from Munster CEO Ian Flanagan, which they've led with in the examiner. Cronin incident could have happened to the man in the street. We take doping and issues associated with it incredibly serious, he said on the Crooked Feed, the official Munster Rugby podcast. All, uh, as does all of Irish rugby, I also say I have a huge amount of sympathy for James in this. He has been incredibly unfortunate. So this is Munster CEO Ian Flanagan on a Munster podcast and Lana signs on to be part of the title party. Adam and Lana will get the chance to finish a job off at Liverpool uh, because he's agreed a short-term contract extension. Nice for Liverpool to, to allow him to be involved with it and uh, probably the right thing to do. Well, they'll want them as well, I presume, over the next few weeks because they're going to be playing twice a week. So, sure. like Adam Alana has been getting a lot of game time uh, over the last few months before football finished up. So, the, the one thing, actually, the bigger story is probably confirms that he's definitely going to leave at the end of the yeah. season where there was a, a thought that maybe he may get another year uh, depending on how the transfer market was looking. Uh, the Irish Times, the sports section there, again, on the left-hand side, they have the story that you touched on there of Ian Flanagan, the Munster Chief, says, Cronin not to blame for doping mix-up, and they look forward to welcoming back into the fold very soon. Uh, Chris Hutton is the main man in terms of pictures on the front of the Irish Times. Our organisations have an opportunity to be part of change. Uh, the Irish coach saying that recent protests can help football address race issues around the world. Racism doesn't go away overnight. 
it's over a period of time and education. A really good piece there uh, with Chris Hutton that's well worth reading. And more on that then from Eamon Zaid. Uh, a lot of racist incidents in Ireland are just brushed under the carpet. And if there's one thing we've, we've learned over the last few days, and not that we should have needed to learn about this, is that he's 100% right and that there is consistently in sport as well as every other part of society racist, racist incidents happening that quite simply nobody's talking about. And down the bottom of the Irish Times, this is a story we covered on... OTBSports.com yesterday. O'Neill objects to development of pitch for youths. So this is a story that uh, Dunfanaghy youths are looking to build a new facility near Hornhead House, which is a derelict property that Martin O'Neill owns. And Martin O'Neill has lodged a planning objection against this, uh, which sparked quite a bit of debate. Uh, some of the comments suggesting that it wouldn't be the first time he's tried to stop people playing football. <laughs> 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 but uh, from a from a PR point of view, it certainly backfired for Martin O'Neill because he's getting a huge amount of stick. Uh, Dunfanaghy have no facilities at the moment. Uh, they're looking to expand. They're looking to go and get themselves a decent setup. And this objection has put a real spanner in the works. Martin O'Neill, I'm sure, has a very different view and may well have very legitimate concerns as to why he doesn't feel that this is the right type of project for that area. And it'll be interesting to see if Martin O'Neill does comment because from what I guess he probably thought was quite a very localised story, suddenly finds itself very much front and centre. Mm. Not an amazing look at the moment, but he probably or may have legitimate concerns. It'll be interesting to see what he says. Back page of the London Times then is Southgate. I back Sterling on race bias. England boss says he wasn't qualified for first job he got. Interesting stuff in this. Great quotes from Gareth Southgate. Just a couple of bits of detail outside of the quotes. He and his squad had talks from anti-racism campaigner Troy Townsend, historian David Olasoga, and Sport England's Chris Grant, who said this week that British sport was undermined by an apartheid in plain sight. Raheem Sterling, as ever, leading the way on this. And I think if you look to your national manager and he is Gareth Southgate, it's great to be empowered by that and to know that Gareth Southgate will have your back on issues like this. Stoke call off United friendly. Meanwhile, as Shane has already mentioned, this is uh, to do with the fact uh, that uh, Michael O'Neill obviously couldn't go and their preparations for the resumption of the Premier League campaign, writes the newspaper, suffered a blow. Uh, it is understood that Solskjaer uh, had arranged the friendly at their training base for 10 a.m., but a number of players from the Championship side turned up at the training ground in their own cars, but they left a short while after. Um, so that's uh, the issue with the Stoke squad. And tennis returns to Wuhan. Women's tennis chiefs are pushing ahead with plans for the tour to return later this year to the Chinese, cap to the Chinese city of Wuhan, which was, of course, the original epicentre of the outbreak. So this is going to take place from October 19th to 25th. Uh, nothing sums up football being back more than that story of Manchester United's friendly being called off. The story, surely, was that Michael O'Neill, a uh, high-profile manager, tested positive for COVID-19. Thankfully, he's asymptomatic. But you, in almost all these stories, you have to dig deep into it to figure out why. It's not on Manchester the back page United, here, right? <laughs> the Bahamut, why their friendly was called off. Manchester United in COVID scare, <laughs> as compared to Michael O'Neill, who actually has been diagnosed with COVID. Yeah, it's it's true. It's not You, you would not know that Michael O'Neill has been diagnosed with COVID-19 if you didn't actually open the Times, despite the fact that it is a back-page story. Uh, the Irish Mail uh, touches on quite a lot of the stories that are on all the back pages today. Munster back their anti-doping protocols, again, dipping into that podcast interview with Ian Flanagan. Southgate calls for more action on racism. Uh, Gareth Southgate talking to the English media yesterday, and as you mentioned, very much backing his English players to take a stand. And also, they have been talking with Shane Kingston, who I know is coming up very shortly, about the wraparound season and potential burnout threat to players. So uh, we'll hear more, I'm sure, on that very shortly. They also have an exclusive interview with Toto Scalacci, uh, the man who broke Irish hearts 30 years on uh, from Italia 90. I wonder how his hair is looking these days. Immaculate, I, I dare say. I, once, uh, I interviewed Toto a few years ago when he was brought to Dublin, and turns out he didn't have great English. But suddenly he had the most beautiful Antonio Conte esque hair. <laughs> That's all you want from an interview, really, especially for radio. Mm. Back page of the Irish Daily Star. We'll wrap these up very quickly, Nathan. O'Neill's virus shock, Stoke boss, rocked by positive COVID 19 test, and time is an issue, claims John Barnes. That's the Irish Daily Star.
Yeah, and uh, looking down through some <laughs> of the other papers then, the Telegraph in England, um, they go with Southgate, open door to black coaches. Uh, taking a knee will be banned at the Olympics. I'm not sure if this is covered in too many of the newspapers, but uh, one of the signs that these protests feel different to what has happened previously in terms of Black Lives Matter is that actually these terrible conglomerates and uh, national governing bodies who generally l will do whatever they can to stamp out any form of protest have been more accepting and allowing of players mm. to take a protest. So whether it's football leagues, uh, various different sports saying actually the usual sanctions that would take place for any sort of, as they would deem a political protest, don't apply. That doesn't seem like it's going to be the case at the Olympics. Uh, athletes at next year's Olympics face a ban for taking a knee in solidarity with anti-racism movements, which uh, even for the Olympic Committee is pretty shocking mm -hmm. and shows just how far behind the curve they are. And if anything, I would imagine, is only going to invite further protests. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. Uh, back page of the Mirror this morning is high low. It's off to work I go. Shane Lowry there talking about the return to golf tomorrow and Reds in virus scare. Old Trafford superstars are locked down. <laughs> like, if you stopped the sentence there, Nathan, you were like, right, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has coronavirus. Not the case. Uh, Old Trafford superstars are locked down. A Stoke boss O'Neill test positive for COVID-19. Very much Michael uh, O'Neill. The impression you're getting is that somebody has arrived straight off a plane from Wuhan with a box full of bats and is wandering around Carrington. <laughs> Not that, actually... Uh, Michael O'Neill has been diagnosed with COVID-19, he has tested positive. Uh, and again, thankfully, he doesn't have any symptoms, but you would have thought that that is the, that's the story here. Poor old Manchester United. Like, that's, that, that will be the next one. United's pre-season plans in disarray. That will be the next one. I would, wouldn't be surprised if it already exists inside some of the papers this morning. Uh, let's just tell you finally this morning, in terms of the sports pages and in terms of content, if you want to bring you the OTV Sports app, is now live. You can get it in the App Store or in the Google Play Store. All your breaking news there and all the stories from across the ODB podcast network, our videos and full shows. It's your one-stop shop, basically, for everything off the ball. You can get OTB AM there this morning. You can get it every morning. And you can watch or listen as a radio show while you go about your morning.